It's finally here. The brand of cooking tools that made you rethink just how good tongs could be is coming to your stovetop. The Babish Cookware line of cookware. Available now. Check the link in the video description. Okay, and this is moist. Take one. It says maker down there. Oh, little time. oh yeah, yeah, it does. It does. Okay, moist maker. <laughs> all right. Folks, it's that magical time of year when we all eat too much and watch football and the uh, children sing their favorite Thanksgiving carols. And uh, I have been told that I screwed up the moist maker. I was told that I did not soak the moist maker, the gravy soaked piece of bread in the middle of the sandwich, for long enough. So I've decided to do it all over again. <laughs> and this time I'm going to soak the bread for like five seconds longer. Let's get started. So first thing we gotta do is make our stuffing. I have here a loaf and loaf of artisanal bread that I'm going to dissect into cubes, which I'm then going to toast uh, until the, the low and slow until all the moisture has been driven out of the bread and that's going to make them into croutons. And then I'm going to turn those croutons into stuffing. Hi, what do you got there? What is that? Dates. Why are you opening a box of dates? Do you want to record your dating reel? Like an acting reel? Who calls it a dating reel, Brad? <laughs> don't they have, is it, wasn't that a thing? Yeah, like video, video dating? dating, but I don't think they ever called it a dating reel. Oh. Let's all, yeah, let's all do our dating reels. Cause my, my dating reel, I think on paper, doesn't sound so great. Hey guys, this is my dating reel. I'm Andrew, I'm 34, I'm bald, I'm a YouTuber, and I grind my teeth really loudly. So now, to turn these into croutons, I'm going to spread them out evenly on a couple of uh, rimmed baking sheets. So now we're putting them in a 200 degree oven for probably about an hour uh, to really, probably about an hour and a half, for probably about two hours to really dry them out. <laughs> and uh, then we ha we'll have croutons, we'll be able to make stuffing out of them. And uh, we'll see you right after that. So here's the man of the hour. Here's why we're spatchcocking the bird, otherwise known as butterflying. Because when a turkey goes into the oven like this, it's just a big old frickin' ball of meat. And the breasts are the part of the bird that are most exposed to the heat, and they are the most delicate part. They the part that we do not want to overcook. So by butterflying the bird, by cutting out the spine, flattening it, not only are we exposing the dark meat down here to more heat from the oven, we're also reducing the amount of time that the whole thing takes to cook through. If you stuff this bird, that stuffing needs to hit 165 to be safe. By that time, your breasts are up at 185, 190, and they're dry as a bone, which is why I do not stuff my turkeys, generally speaking. So we're gonna spatchcock it, and that process is as easy as it is fun. Why, how? How is this affixed in here? What is this sorcery that they've done to this? Oh my God, what manner of device? What kind of speculum did they put in this? Some no! <laughs> Damn it! into my eyes. Can you get salmonella through your eyes? Yeah. Well, I'm about to. I got this horrible device out of the bird, and now we have to do two things. We have to cut out the spine, we have to cut, the, cut out the wishbone. That's gonna make it easier to carve down the line. We wanna stay as close to the spine as possible, otherwise the, uh, the um, thigh can kind of fall apart. This is Jess's favorite set of noise, noises. Should we do some spatchcocking ASMR here? Because it sounds so pleasant. Sure, Brad, F pervert. Oh, you gotta really kind of get in there. Oh, yeah. Look at that, that's, that's uh, flavor. Oh, what's that thing at the bottom called, remember? That's the... It's the, it has a Pope's something, nose. Pope's oh, the nose. Pope's nose. I was gonna say the Pope's goiter. Uh, so now we have to find the wishbone. Hitting it out is a very onerous task. Also, it just, it precludes you from being able to make a wish. 
just like learning that Santa Claus isn't real, you got to learn that uh, wishes aren't real either, and that uh, your dreams don't come true, and that uh, you die alone. Donnie Darko, 2001. Uh, hi. Oh, you. Hi. Oh, it's. <laughs> <laughs> this is Doobie, aka Tina, aka Doobie Doobop, TikTok star extraordinaire, uh, and YouTube star extraordinaire, as I understand. Uh, 600,000 subscribers in uh, some some odd weeks. Congratulations. It's pretty Thank cool. You. Uh, we're gonna make a f***ing gross wish. Uh, whoever gets the longer piece, I guess, gets, gets it. Here we go. One, One two, two, three. three. Oh. You oh. win, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Ready? One, One, two, three. three. Oh, no, it's so it's, it's not as fun. Oh. 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 You got the wish. <laughs> I wish that we didn't do that. <laughs> So now all we have to do is flatten our bird out by, uh, I believe J. Kenji Lopez Alt refers to it as a little bit of uh, home chiropractor e. Oh, <laughs> God. It's always so visceral to do this, but guess what? It's worth it. What we have here is, uh, you know, probably about half a cup of kosher salt to maybe a teaspoon of baking powder, I'd say. But the baking powder is going to uh, lower the temperature at which the Maillard reaction occurs, so we end up with crispier skin. So I'm just hitting it very liberally, but uh, conservatively. I'm so this is a centrist turkey? This is a centrist turkey, Brad. This is a uh, libertarian turkey. It's, it, it, it believes in self, self-reliance, self-sufficiency. It believes in small uh, cluckerment. Small gobblements, government, gov, gov, government, whatever. It, yeah, it's a sure. It's a centrist turkey, and that's why it's dead. Another minor improvement we're making to this recipe is last time I made stock from the spine and the spine alone, and as a result, not only was it very light, it wasn't as flavorful as it could have been. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some store-bought turkey stock, I'm going to fortify it with our, our turkey spine, our turkey neck, and some aromatics. This is a great way to amp up your store-bought stock and make it taste homemade. I just delivered that entire thing impeccably. Pe All right, cleaver time, because I, I experienced some performance issues with my rabbit a couple weeks ago, and I don't want that again. It happens to a lot of guys. As I understand, it happens to men over six foot. Oh man, I love a good cleaver. That's great. I'm gonna cut this up into like two inch segments just so the, uh, the stock gets lots of exposure to that delicious spinal fluid. And there's the Pope's Okay, <laughs> not anymore. Now to give the stock a little bit more flavor and color, I'm going to brown the turkey pieces in a little bit of oil before adding the liquid and aromatics. I'm dro dropping in my turkey parts. Now, uh, prepping vegetables for a stock is a very delicate, uh, uh, precise pro- Done. Okay, we got some good color on our turkey bits. Not bad smells either. I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> That's Robocop. Now just because as you can see the fond on the bottom is getting a little dark, something that can help with that is adding more stuff to the pot. That creates steam that prevents stuff from sticking and burning. Sleeves around a little bit, get some good color, get some good fond on the bottom of the pot. You know what that is, folks? That is a one-way ticket to Flavorville. Try to sue me for that, guy. Try. Don't. Please don't try. Oh God, I made a huge mistake. I'm also gonna throw in a handful of fresh thyme. Always nice. A couple bay leaves. Don't fully understand what they do, but they do something. And now I'm gonna cover it with 12 whopping cups of store-bought turkey stock. And this stuff normally tastes like the inside of a dog's ass, but most of us are already doing a whole lot around Thanksgiving, so adding stock to the mix, generally not the best or funnest idea. Uh, this way, just by simmering these together for a couple hours, you're gonna amp up the turkey flavor in your stock and by extension, by proxy, your gravy. Knowledge. Okay.
You hear that, folks? That's the sound of flavor, not really. It's just the sound of our bread being dried out and now it's croutons and now it can cool off and it can become our stuffing. Long story short, that is pretty short actually, so I think we're good, right? Now's the, now's the easiest part of the day, folks. Uh, we are going to make some cranberry sauce and that is as easy as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oop, I guess that counts as 110, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, uh, 21, and uh, 22. It's a 22 step, step process. We're gonna bring this to a simmer and cook it for probably about 30 minutes uh, until it's thick and cranberry sauce like. Wouldn't that be uh, 23? Like the Jim Carrey movie? Oh God. To prep the turkey for roasting, first off, I'm going to chop up some aromatics, some mirepoix, uh, no skinning, because these are just being used as drip catchers, because we're gonna place the turkey on a wire rack set in a rim baking sheet to roast at a very high temperature. And a lot of drippings, a lot of fat are gonna come off that bird. We, we don't want it to burn. And if we just have a bare bottom of the tray, too much liquid is gonna evaporate in the heat of the oven. It's gonna burn, it's gonna smoke, it's gonna ruin Thanksgiving. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> I get the burps are only funny to me. I, I laugh. It's very easy to make you laugh. Look, watch this. Mm. <laughs> I'm just doing a rough chop on my onions. We're just using these, prevent burning, and yada yada, and blah da blah, and kill me, it's fine. <laughs> Brad! All right, let's line this guy with some aluminum foil. I'm going to dump all of our aromatics onto. Ah, my eyes! <sighs> okay. So. Uh. Okay. Okay. So. <laughs> Shut up! Uh, hey, Smiles. Hey. We try to get into. Your apron. <laughs> <laughs> I have my bird set here on my rack of aromatics. So now this guy's ready to go into our 425 degree Fahrenheit convection oven for probably about 45 minutes until the breasts register buck 55 and the thighs and dark meat register hopefully around like 175. Kendall, would you do the honors for me? Thank you. Oh, that rack's too high. Uh, I'll do it. Oh, thank you. I've had a bad track record with hot. Uh, Racks. <laughs> all right, folks, it's the moment we've all been waiting for. The turkey's coming out of the oven. Oh yeah, look at how beautiful it is. This is the kind of all over brown, all over crisp skin that you cannot get with a traditional cooking method. Let's take a listen, shall we? Oh, oh no, oh no, oh no. What, did somebody replace the skin on this turkey with Murano glass? Let's temp it. Oh no. Oh no. Buck 47. We're gonna go a little bit longer, folks. That's turkey for you. So this was the moment we're waiting for to still wait. What's happening? All right, so the stock's been going for about an hour and a half. Hopefully it's reduced by about four cups. We're about to find out. And something I want to do is a blind taste test, starring none other than cameraman Brad. Brad, you ready? I'm not blind. Ooh. So Brad, come on over here, and I'm going to prove to you for the last time <laughs> that simmering uh, aromatics in, and, and turkey in your... Uh, okay, all right, well, okay, you're ahead of me on the blindfold. That's cool. No, you're good, right here. Oh, sorry. Right here, right there. There you go, tall stuff. 
All right, Brad. Okay. You ready? I think so. I'm going to give you a little bit of stock number one. I'm kind of nervous it's going to burn my mouth. It's not going to burn your mouth, I promise. I'm going to blow on it. Ready? Here comes the train. I'm gonna put it on the base of your lip first, and now we're gonna dump it back. There we go. That's stock number one. Okay. Now let's try out stock number two. One, two, and three. Number one tastes substantially better. What the <laughs> Wait. No, that, no, no, that, that's correct. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was saying that with a big, I was saying that with a big smile on my face. I'm sorry. Yeah, that, everyone is like noticeably, like you can, strikingly like, yeah, better. Yeah, you can take that. <laughs> it's strikingly better. Yeah, no, it really is. and uh, I don't know why we needed to prove this. No, take it off. Yeah, take it off. She really doesn't like the whole no, mask on the eyes thing. Unicorn horn, but also not a unicorn horn. No, it looks like you have a dude's package on your forehead. <laughs> that's what it looks like. <laughs> I love that. That's. Kendall's version of like <laughs> some guy's pa package sitting on your forehead is a, 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 it's like a unicorn horn. horn. <laughs> Damn. Thank you very much for your time. Yes. And uh, really. it's always a pleasure to have you. And uh, I'll see you right over there. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll be there. All right. good, it's been see a good you, time. See you next time. All right, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take this. Look, look, here I am. Now, now I'm here. We're here. Oh, look at that bird. Look at that bird. And the thickest part of this breast, I'm clocking 162, could not be more perfect. So, I'm going to let this guy rest for at least half an hour before carving. It will stay hot. The skin will stay shatteringly crisp. My God, my holy sweet Jesus of Lord of Nazareth. That's really crispy. <laughs> but the cool part about this episode is we're gonna let it rest entirely, because it's supposed to be a leftover sandwich. Another thing that I think I botched, honestly, because I ate the sandwich hot. I had everything hot, fresh out of the stove, as though it was a Thanksgiving dinner, and then I made it into a sandwich. That's not what a leftover sandwich is. We gotta make some stuffing. First thing I'm gonna do is make some impromptu pork sausage. So we got a pound of pork, some chopped fresh sage, maybe about a tablespoon's worth. Got one clove of crushed garlic, and uh, I'm just gonna hit it with a little S and P as well. Five hundred. Gonna squish it together, and you can do this ahead of time. But we're doing everything at once here, because that is how we do things. Because we aren't good at time management. Sage advice. Sage advice. You son of a bitch. You know, because like the the sausage is, has wisdom. We're heading over to the stove top now. We're gonna saute the. Uh, Sausage first, get some nice browning on it, and then we're going to saute the onions and celery and some other um, uh, herbs, and then we're gonna toss it all together with stock and croutons, and that is going to be our delicious Thanksgiving stuffing. Got it? Good. Do you want new eggs? And eggs. Plop. We're gonna brown that up the same way we would if we was making Hamburger Helper. It's not the most pleasant looking thing in the world, Let's get this out of here. A lot of fat in this pan. We don't need all this damn fat. We just need a little bit of fat. In fact, you know, I'm, I'm gonna use all of it. Never mind. We, we want all this fat. <laughs> and now, the sizzle. Not as, not as good as I'd hoped. Folks, we're gonna have a full Thanksgiving meal here. <laughs> we're eating like kings tonight. Or pilgrims. And let's get these guys together. Cooled drained sausage in with the breadcrumbs. Got my sauteed uh, vegetables going in there. Ooh, I like that. I have some. It's chopped parsley, a bunch of chopped fresh sage, and a little bit of picked fresh thyme. And now I'm just gonna give these guys a little toss together, try to cool off those vegetables because we have to add stock and we have to add an egg and I don't want to cook anybody. To prevent the eggs from scrambling, I'm going to temper them with a bit of warm stock, which will hopefully be a thing that works. What does tempering mean? Tempering means slowly adding a bit of warm liquid to eggs, which basically denars the and then it's the temperature. So it's, uh, it prevents, <laughs> can you explain the science behind this? Um, 
Well, it's really simple. It's just to bring in, so if eggs are refrigerator cold and stock is at 90 degrees, you're gonna be bringing up the overall temperature of the eggs, just somewhere in the middle there. Um, typically you do this with hotter liquids. You do it really slowly a little bit at a time so it can come up to like an even higher temperature without scrambling. But in this case, we're just kind of taking like a medium step and this can be added to stuff that's even hotter, but it'll be okay. Nerd. All right, so I tempered my eggs with a little bit of stock and now I'm gonna mix those in with some more stock. I want everybody to get really nicely saturated. I want it to be able to stick together. I wanna be able to pick it up in fistfuls and be able to press it together into a big, wonderful mass. That's good, see? It's like a, it's like a stuffing snowball. <laughs> this is what you want, right? <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna throw it No, oh my God, I'm not a monster. Could I? Could I bring myself to do it? To throw a jagged ball of wet, sloppy meat into Kendall's face? You want me to hand feed you a little bit of this? Yeah. Come here, baby bird. No, it's okay. You're safe. You're good. You're okay. You're okay. Good boy. <laughs> that is the most degrading thing I've ever done to a person. Well, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna grease the uh, pan up with schmaltz or chicken fat because that's gonna taste good. And I see no reason why I shouldn't shove a little bit of this chicken fat in here. Just kind of get it in there and just kind of, just kind of get it in there, you know? Just kind of get it in there. Just try and mix it up. Just get it in there. You just gotta, sometimes you just gotta get it in. We got our stuffing stuffed into a casserole and now this guy's headed into a 400 something degree oven for some amount of time. So now, last thing we have to do is make gravy. Um, I've burned myself. Jess just hacked off a big hunk of her finger. Uh, Kendall is dead. And uh, I'd had an idea that instead of butter, I'm going to use chicken fat in my gravy. To make this gravy, I'm going to use roughly three tablespoons of fat. So I'm actually gonna do a little bit more flour than what Kendall recommended to me because I think she was looking at my old recipe, which frankly is inadvisable because I was a dumb young man when I, when I came out with this episode. To wit, I have an apology to make. I made a really dumb, simple-minded dude joke uh, in this episode that, that I've regretted to this day. Uh, so this is a botched that needs to be unbotched, which is I said, I like my gravy the way I like my women, thin and rich. And that is not only untoward, it's untrue. <laughs> I don't like thin, who likes thin gravy? That's disgusting. Rich, yes, sure, I like rich gravy, but it wasn't rich. I didn't thicken it enough and I didn't want to do it again, so I just made a joke about it, a bad joke. And, uh, and you all suffered the consequences. And so I, 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 from the bottom of my heart, I apologize for that crack, because uh, I'm not proud of it, I'm not happy with it. And uh, it's very 2017. No, it's 2016. It was very 2016, okay? But how do you like your chickens? Fatty. <laughs> Speaking of chicken fat chickens, I have about a quarter cup of chicken fat here, about four tablespoons. Got about four tablespoons of flour. Just gonna dump that right in there. Start whisking it together to form, what's it called, Brad? Uh... Um, uh... A roux. Uh, we were <laughs> making a... Uh, Nice thin blonde roux here. It's a little bit darker than a blonde roux. I just want to get a little color in there. Now what we're gonna do is start slowly adding in our stock. Once we've added a little bit, we're gonna whisk it until it forms a smooth paste. That way, we're going to ensure lumpless gravy. There's a little bit more. See, look at all those lumps. 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 All those lumps. And they're gone. Look at that, folks. Is it true that blonde roux have more fun? All right, I'm trying, to, I'm, trying to un, I'm trying to undo the damage done with my earlier joke. So uh, making jokes about blondes, it's not my MO, but yes they do! Oh, I can hear Kendall breaking ice upstairs with her therapy group, she's, she's doing icebreakers. <laughs> or is it her dating reel? Ah, uh, see, okay. Brad's better at callbacks than I am. I'm here to uh, make the food and look good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, stuffing's ready to come out of the oven. All right, folks, stuffing's ready to come out of the oven. All right, folks, stuffing's ready to come out of the oven. All right, folks, stuffing's ready to come out of the oven. 
Ah! Kendall, what's about to happen? Uh, damn. All right, stuffing's ready to come out of the oven. Oh my fucking gracious. Would you look at that stuffing? I mean, it's straight out of the damn thing, straight out of the oven. I'm not gonna blow on it. Nope, it's not hot. Nope, it's fine. No, it's fine, I'm gonna eat the corner. It's fine, the corner's the no, coolest part. No, it's fine. Mm. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Do you want Walter? Uh-uh, that's really good. Mm. That's gonna make a great sandwich. <laughs> Next moment we've been waiting for, take 12. Now, the uh, uh, bread is almost ready to come out. Actually, I think it's ready to come out of them, so I'm gonna go check it out it right now. Oh yeah, that's looking good. That is a nice kind of like brown, you know. I want it toasted on one side, but not necessarily the other. As you can see, not as toasted on this side. This is gonna be better for the outside of the sandwich because it's not gonna crunch and sort of you know, mess up the roof of your mouth there. Now we have all of our elements here, we just have to put the damn thing together. We do have our toast here. The beauty of toasting it in the oven is not only that it wastes a lot of energy, but also <laughs> that it sticks to the <laughs> Why did that happen? I don't know, it's glued. Oh. <laughs> you gotta be me. We just need one that looks halfway decent, just one. Hello, <laughs> here's our winner. So it is assembly time, and I have to butcher a turkey. Be careful. It's fine. I'll take extra safety precautions and use these knife-proof gloves. Let's get moist. I'm sorry, I am, I am trying to be genuinely extra careful, which is why I'm not talking as much while I do this. Okay, okay. In the meantime, Jess can host the, the, the show. Today on Botch by Babish, we learn a very important lesson Please be careful with sharp things so as to not end up like this. I'm gonna to try to construct this with structural integrity first and foremost. So, I'm throwing down some, some sea sauce, some sea berry S on the bottom and top of the sandwich, followed by white meat on the bottom. Press that down so it's nice and even. I'm gonna do stuffing on both layers, a little thin layer, a little like a patty of stuffing. It's cooled off, it's totally cooled off. There we go, nice little. <laughs> Yep, yeah, it's so cold, brr, brr, oh no. All right, now comes the slice of gravy-soaked bread. I'm just gonna give my gravy a whisk because it is cooled off. Make sure that it's nice and smooth. And this is the whole purpose for this episode, is making sure that this layer of bread is thoroughly soaked in gravy. So I'm not going to let it sit for even one second less than it ought to. Brad, cue dramatic music, please. Oh boy. I mean, the fact that this bread is untoasted already, it's got so much more gravy happening than the uh, previous iteration. I'd call that a piece of gravy-soaked bread, would you not? Am I crazy? I'm not crazy. Okay. There we go. Now onto this layer. For me, I'm gonna do white meat for structural integrity, just because I think it's gonna to stay together a little better. Now another layer of a stuffing kind of patty. So last time I cut it in half like this. Big mistake. Any given sa any sandwich worth a damn should be cut diagonally. Et voila. There we have it, folks. The ultimate Thanksgiving leftover sandwich, the moist maker, executed to perfection. Only one thing left to do, go to sleep. <sighs> it's a messy bastard, but it's Thanksgiving and a bite. Hmm. Until next time, this has been Bosch by Babish. Keep screwing up. I will if you will. Do I have gravy on my beard? Surprisingly, what no. about now? Just a little bread. Seriously? Yeah. What am I doing wrong? Mm -hmm.